This is our third in a series of videos about the world altitude record attempts at Cable Downs in western New South Wales. The 2010 series of record attempts were held over a two week period in late March and early April. It was expected that doubling the time for the attempt would significantly increase the chances of encountering wind conditions which would enable us to break the record. It didn't. The first week I sat out calm and warm conditions with only one flight above 5,000 feet. It was very frustrating. Here you can see me hand flying one of our big kites. We can't fly from hand normally but on this day in the early evening there was a gentle breeze. Even so it was a struggle at times. These kites are built by Mike Richards with 15mm diameter fiberglass tube spars and 1.5 weight ripstop nylon sails. They weigh 3 kilograms. The central triangular cell gives extra lift by increasing the sail area but its main benefit is stabilizing the kite. The front two sides of the triangular cell acts as keels to keep the kite pointed straight rather than swaying from side to side which tends to spill wind and reduce lift. The line is attached to a three leg bridle which is simply a heavier set of lines which distributes the kite's pull evenly along the front spar and also allows some adjustability of the angle of attack or the kite's set angle to the wind. This kite has been set with a 12 degree angle of attack for light winds. The white and black kite has a 7 degree angle of attack to take advantage of stronger winds but it is more difficult to launch. The wing span is 6 meters or 19 and a half feet and a height of 2.8 meters or 9 feet 1 inch. The total lifting area is 11.5 square meters or 120 square feet. The following day showed promising wind conditions, but we struggled hard between 5,000 and 9,000 feet. Long line out and indifferent wind at the kite saw huge line sag, with the line nearly dragging on the ground. We had to use the full extent of the field to avoid the line snagging in treetops. We caught one tree top and it took an hour to dislodge the line, but during the struggle the kite reached 10,681 feet, our highest yet. If we reached that altitude in unfavourable conditions, we thought the record would be ours with decent winds. It was a long and tiring day with 10 hours manning the winch, flies crawling up the nose and the millions of plague locusts hopping about underfoot. And it's probably around about five or 600 feet, so we're keeping our fingers crossed. What do you reckon, Bobby? Oh, I hope so. What do you reckon, Rog? Happen today. That is Roger. See, I just go up a little bit closer. See, that is Roger. You can see him just tucked in there. There he is. That's it. And uh, Mike, what are you reckon? Mike's good. Things are going good. Yeah, we should be okay today. Cool. Yeah. All right, let's go and see what the kite's got to say about all that. There we go. How about that? What's the uh, what's the altitude, Mike? Good. Above ground on the computer, you chook. 1,000 feet and we're at 500 feet. So it's about 560 feet above ground level now and uh, we hope that we don't... We can't video it for much longer because it'll be too far away and too high. But uh, there's the last little bit of video on Sunday the 28th of March. That's the Nick Winch Mark 5. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Mick. Look at that. Apple a day keeps the, the kites away. Mike is the food man. So you can see the new line at the back there on a new reel. Uh, that's been provided to us by um, Dyneema, so that's, uh, that's pretty cool. And there's uh, 12 kilometres of string on that spool at the back. The first six kilometres are um, red and about 200 pound braking strength and then the last uh, white line is about 300 pound so hopefully we'll see that today because that means we're getting fairly high in fact we had six and a half kilometers of line out that day uh, which was the longest uh, line length we've had out so far the line out is accurately measured with a distance gauge which has been adapted to fit to the, the capstan shaft So there you can see all the gears working for it. 
and then that's the control by the line was shedding some uh, red material it's um, apparently this polyurethane coating on the line uh, it doesn't normally present a problem but it um, did uh, present some uh, difficulty uh, uh, with line guides on the winch it tended to clog them up and so we, s we simply ran them uh, the line through the guides picked the uh, polyurethane off and also ran our fingers over the line as the line went out and was able to um, wipe some of the uh, polyurethane off but just watch it for a bit because it's going to... Um, that's better See the way it's coming across the capstan better because it's it's not letting it slide down that rim. We just seven we didn't get seven thousand meters of line out here, we only got about six thousand five hundred or so meters. Yeah. Oh, it's going all right. A couple of minor hiccups, you know. It's, it's a. Uh, if, if I had unlimited resources with a machine shop, I'd you know do a lot of the, a lot of the more bulletproof and stuff. But you know, it's it's okay. It works okay. It's a bit rickety sometimes. Yeah. Our next series of attempts was in September 2011 where we really kicked some high altitude ass. Watch for video 4 coming soon. <laughs>